You need a minute? He's ready, Bob, but just want to get Michelle. Um, yeah, I'm just having difficulty with the Something went wrong. Hey, Aunt, can you hear us? Anthony Esposito. Okay. Yep, I hear you. Uh, may need you. Uh, okay. You good? Okay, no, we're good. good we're just a little, little uh, stumble on the internet there, but we're good. Okay, Bob. All we're set? Yep, all set. This is a revised uh, Water Pollution Control Authority and Town Council meeting of the North of North Brantford, Connecticut, Tuesday, July 7th, 2020, in the Town Council Chambers at 7, 7.10 p.m. Uh, I want to start with, the, with a uh, salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Okay. Michelle, roll call. Mayor Viglione. Here. Deputy Mayor Zampiano. Here. Councilor Angeloni. Here. Councilor Diamond. We see you. Yeah, she's here. Councilor Duty. Yes, here. Councilor Fawnen. Here. Councilor Goad. Absent tonight. Councillor Paternoster. Here. And Councillor Policia. Here. Okay, moving to the minutes of a previous <coughs> meeting. June 16, 2020, Town Council meeting. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, motion motion was made by uh, Councillor Duty, seconded by Councillor Angeloni. Uh, any discussion? Just one one comment. Um, Michelle captured it accurately. I uh, I misspoke and said Jessica Catano as the new director. It's Jesse, uh, but I did say Jessica. So just so just J E S S I E. Yes. That wasn't your mistake. It was my mistake. You captured it. Okay, have a vote, please. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Okay, next is uh, June 29th meeting, uh, special meeting of the town council, June 29th, 2020. So moved. Second? Second. Who, was, who said it first? Lou. <laughs> Lou got it. Lou, okay, we're going to give it to Lou. Um, motion made by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by uh, Councilor Paternaster. Uh, any discussion? Um, vote, please. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Mike, can you tell her I'm abstaining? Okay, one abstention from yes, Councilor thank Diamond. You. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Marie. Okay, uh, next we'll move into the Water Pollution Control Authority agenda, correspondence, and citizen statements. Nothing. Uh, unfinished business. Nothing. We'll move into new business. Request to connect uh, to sanitary sewers, 1512 Middletown Avenue, map 67C, lot 69, White Hollow, Middletown Avenue, sanitary sewers. Uh, good evening. I'll just give you a brief overview of the request. Um, the request is for the property, uh, the house located on it at 1512 Middletown Avenue, to connect to the sanitary sewers in Route 17. On the, uh, just to give you an idea of where that location is, it's a little bit south of the entrance to the Mill Pond Tavern on the opposite side of the street. A couple of houses up there. This, this house is on about a three quarter acre uh, parcel with some limitations on it. Um, in order to connect to the Route 
the Route 17 sanitary sewer is governed by the White House Moonstown Avenue sewer ordinance. And there's some restrictions on that and caveats that have to be met if anybody wants to connect into the sanitary sewer. There is capacity for it. It was left in there for, for existing homes along uh, Route 17. And again, there's a process they have to go through where there's four conditions that, that they have to meet. Uh, it, basically, the four <coughs> conditions are that it has to be an existing building lot and an existing home at the time of application. So they met that. Uh, East Shore has to determine that it's either <coughs> There's non repairable septic system, or it's not feasible to make repair. There is a letter in there from the Shore District Health stating uh, restrictions on the lot, and they recommend connecting the sanitary sewer. Um, the lot can't diminish the capacity for the rest of the area um, because it, it is a limited capacity sanitary sewer line on Route 17. It's only one lot, so there's minimum discharge. So that criteria is met. And the fourth and final criteria that's in the ordinance no longer applies. Um, it was put in there on a condition of the DP grant loan agreement. Um, <coughs> in 2017, they said that they no longer monitor that and that no longer applies uh, to their requirements. So basically, um, they met the criteria um, and then they suggested motion for your consideration. A um, couple of things to point out in the motion. It's a standard, um, it's a standard motion. Um, the important thing is they have to pay a $12,300 special connection fee prior to taking on the sanitary sewer permit to connect. And the other one is they have to enter into a agreement uh, prepared by the town attorney for, uh, finalizing all these conditions. Again, there is a suggested motion. I'd, I'd like to make a motion. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'd like to make the motion as presented to us, and it's on page 31 um, in our iPad in the packet. And Michelle, I take it you have this you also, right? It. Okay. Thank you. Second. Okay, motion was made by uh, Council Angeloni, seconded by Deputy Mayor Sampano. Uh, any discussion, any further discussion? Can we have a vote, Michelle? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Thank you. Okay. Next is uh, possible change to regulations for layout an assessment of sanitary sewers regarding designated transit recreational vehicle parking spaces. Um, that item is discussed uh, quite a bit uh, previously. It's subject to a public hearing at 7.30. Um, and hopefully after the public hearing, you can come back to it and have a general discussion and see if there's a consensus on how to move forward. Okay. All right, uh, next we'll move, move into citizen statements and petitions. Wait, do we have anything? Nothing for WPCA, no. Okay. Oh, wait, um, unless the, uh, we'll wait for the hearing on, on hearing. yeah, no, no, no petitions of correspondence. No. Okay, uh, regular town council meeting. Uh, reports from committees, boards, and commissions. Economic Development Commission, Roger Salloway's monthly uh, report. Um, the EDC met last night um, and is a, a rather light agenda um, for them, but they did, um, the next advanced manufacturing meeting is going to be held on August 18th. Um, there was discussion because the Poco Fest is canceled this year um, of some they've been trying to think of some kind of an idea for the businesses um, as to what they can do to replace um, under the tent which is usually held the night before the poco fest so they're still kicking around some ideas as far as what that might if they are going to pair it up with they have earth science week that is in october i believe um, so they may do something with that um, they also did talk about the solar project um, which is on our agenda later also um, and then um, 
Roger had his, they're continuing ahead with the pollinator pathway program and also the sunflower seeds. Um, they have a number of packets that are ready for pickup from residents um, to plant sunflowers. I know they're, I think they're planted at Town Hall here because I saw them yeah. coming up, um, some of the rows. And they also, um, there's a pollinator pathway section that um, a resident had planted on the corner of Old Post Road and 17. Uh, Nancy Tipping had done that. Um, she's very active in this also. Um, so anyone wanting to get sunflower seeds, they're available, Roger. At the libraries? At the libraries and at Town Hall? Okay, so they're available at the two libraries and at the town hall to pick up packets um, to plant. That's it. Okay, thank you, Rose. Uh, next, park and recreation. Um, I know they're calling a special meeting for next week. They're trying to get a meeting together, and I know there has been some issues um, with our basketball hoops that were put back up on Memorial Court. Um, and generating large, large groups of people, and most of them are not residents. Um, and we all got the letter um, from a resident that he had emailed complaining of um, the actions of the people that are there, um, just the vulgarity, the music that is being played, and how we can address these issues. So I know Park and Rec is also going to be looking at that to see once. Um, and I think a lot of it is is because um, we, we put ours back up because the, the according to the governor's um, executive, you know, that that was opening up last week, but a lot of area towns did not. And so we're getting a lot of out-of-towners and like our own residents can't play because they have no regard for the residents here. Um, and I know there was going to be a call today, Michael, right? With yes, yep, it was a call. I'll, I'll co and I can cover that under my uh, uh, okay, report. that's fine. Yep. Um, so, so there is an issue with that, and, and it's, it's basically because the other towns don't have them up, so we're getting a lot of out of towners coming here and how we're going to deal with that. So, okay, thank you, Rose. Mike. Uh, we haven't started yet, have we? Uh, we have it started here. Yes, we're in. Uh, we're in item seven: reports and committees. We're under item seven: reports and committees. I'm sorry, okay. I had you on mute. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're under reports and committees. We're now on item seven uh, C: police commission. Thank you. And Mike, can you say there was no meeting? Yes, there was no meeting. <laughs> well done. This is crazy. I'm going to have to. Well, we can so hear you, Murray. You, we can, they can hear you fine. They can hear me? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Got you right by the speaker and the, and the microphone. Okay. We can see you too. Okay, so nothing on. I can't hear them, but they can hear me. Okay, nothing, nothing on police commission. We'll move to a fire commission. Ron, do you have anything? Yeah, it's just real quick. They, <clears throat> they had a meeting last week. Um, the uh, chief rolled out a new organizational chart, which hopefully is going to uh, help them operate a little bit more efficiently and doles out the responsibilities to the uh, different um, assistant chiefs. Also, there's some work going on at the uh, ambulance company, Company 4. They're, they're uh, expanding their supply closet there, um, which is going to allow them to be more organized. And I guess it really wasn't safe the way it was. And it's also going to increase um, the amount of um, supplies that they're able to, to store in-house, which, as we found out with COVID, um, is really important that we, we have enough supplies stocked up and stuff like that. So they're, they're doing that. Uh, they're also going to start looking into the purchase possibly of a new ambulance um, as the ambulance is currently uh, are being repaired quite often and it's, uh, they're going to look to try to save some money maybe with a new purchase. 
um, and then he just covered, you know, through the uh, through the budget season, we appro we appropriated money for uh, the purchase of air packs and a few other things. And uh, the chief just reported that uh, those purchases have been made. And uh, as far as being up to date on uh, on supplies and and things throughout the uh, fire department, they're they're in good shape and should be good for a while. So that's it. All right, thanks. Man. Uh, next, we have the Board of Education and Town, uh, Town Council Communication Subcommittee. No meeting. Okay. Next, uh, the Town Planning Goals Subcommittee. No meeting. Nothing. Uh, next is Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, I didn't attend the June meeting, but um, their next meeting is Thursday, July 9th. All right. Thank you. Uh, next, we have North Brantford Police Department Facility and Town Center Advisory Committee. That committee met on June 24th. There's a lot of information from that meeting in the packet. The next meeting is July 15th. All right. Thank you, Murray. Next is Finance Subcommittee. Um, there's been no meeting. Okay. Next, next we have Ad, Ad Hoc Design Review Committee. Yeah, they, they, they met and uh, are going to reconvene. Uh, I don't have the date on that, but that'll be uh, later in July. Um, and there's a lot of uh, information, obviously, to digest there with the uh, borings environmental uh, issues and uh, work with uh, um, the committee. So I'll have to get a report for the next meeting on the 21st. Okay. We were supposed to meet on the 14th, Mike. Yeah, the oh, ad hoc. Great. Oh, thank you. Okay. The 14th? 14th. Where do those meetings take place? Are they here? Yeah. Unless they, um, yeah, I mean, we did a site visit. Last time was a site visit uh, at the high school. Right. This will be back here on the 14th. Okay. All right. Next we have uh, move into the public hearing. Yeah, it's on 7.30, yeah. We can't start it. Okay, we got to wait a few minutes. You can go into the town managers. You can start the town manager. Can we do that? Room. Yeah, sure. Okay. Just All keep right, going. Let's do the, the town manager's report. You want to do that, Mike? Yeah, no problem. I'll jump right in. Seven thirty. We'll start the other one. Yeah. Uh, so the COVID nineteen uh, update. I had submitted a uh, memo to you uh, based on the numbers at the time. I, I uh, composed the uh, memo. It was July first. We were at uh, eighty five cases. Uh, we have ticked up uh, three cases as of today uh, to 88 uh, cases cumulative since the start of the uh, pandemic. So um, still relatively uh, flat um, with respect to our overall number of cases. Um, and I also mentioned we started uh, town hall hours for um, the tax office open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 11.30 and then uh, by appointment after that if you can't make it uh, during the morning hours. Uh, and the other departments are open by, by appointment as well. We have instituted and put in a uh, drop box out front as well. Uh, taxpayers can still pay uh, electronically uh, with the fee is waived uh, for those transactions. They can also put it in the secure drop box. We clear that box at 9 and 2 every day. Um, and if those don't work, then you can make an appointment or show up from 8.30 to 11.30. So uh, in monitoring that, uh, we have a greeter at the door uh, to escort people in and out. Uh, and our numbers um, for the first couple of days, July 1st, 61 taxpayers, July 2nd, 41, yesterday, 38, uh, today, 47. So it's uh, pretty consistent, pretty steady. Um, and we'll just continue to monitor that. Uh, the libraries are also open and uh, they are doing fine. And I think the comments uh, that I heard from Lauren Davis, the director, uh, that they're very happy, patrons are happy that, uh, that, that they're back open. Uh, and they've obviously modified their services and their uh, configuration there. Um, I also have numbers from Lauren Davis on um, their patrons uh, for July 1st Atwater had 46 Smith had 48 uh, July 2nd Atwater had 35 Smith had 30 
uh, July 6, uh, Atwater had 41 and Smith had 39. So I didn't get their uh, totals uh, today, but uh, imagine that they're running roughly the same, anywhere from 65 to, to 90, anywhere in between. So That's good. Are they, are they totally open, Mike, the whole? Well, not, not totally. To yeah, it's people? limited in terms of service, not totally open, and how much time you, you, you can, you can mm -hmm. we're trying to get people in to get service, get their, their, their stuff, and, and of course, if they're, they're doing things, we're not kicking them out, but again, we're not encouraging, you know, the, the, you know, the long breaks and making it a second home kind of thing, you know, and, and that's yeah. unfortunate because it, it, it should, it has served that way, and it's a, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice amenity to have a library that you feel comfortable and that you can, you know, make yourself available to services that we provide, but all, overall, uh, I think they understand and, and the staff is, is doing well and, uh, you know, everything's running smoothly so thus far. Good, good. Uh, so I did, um, I also want to mention the uh, fact that um, we, we were on a call today uh, with the health department uh, with respect to the basketball courts and uh, there are a couple of factors in, in play here. Rose had mentioned, Councilor uh, Angeloni had mentioned um, the fact that the uh, anticipated uh, opening of phase three did not happen. As many of you know, the governor pushed a pause button on that and uh, is not happening. <coughs> basketball is in a uh, category uh, of high risk uh, and along with many other um, sports like wrestling, boxing, football, lacrosse, uh, dance, rugby, um, so forth, ice hockey. Um, so it's a high risk category uh, and the uh, guidance from the health department is to take those um, basketball hoops down. Um, Brantford, East Haven, have taken them down, kept them down. They did not put theirs back up. And as Rose mentioned, it generated a lot of activity here. Uh, I don't have the photos for you. I only got them an hour ago. Uh, but I do have the numbers in terms of how many uh, people showed up to play basketball on the courts. Thursday, approximately 54. Uh, Friday, 60. Saturday, 74. Sunday, 60. Those are approximate numbers, not exact count. Uh, but um, pretty darn close. I had another report that the numbers were off ju just by a little. Those are, those are alarming numbers in my, in my mind, in my view, and uh, in, in consultation with Mike, uh, I'm making the recommendation to take those basketball hoops. I'm gonna direct the superintendent, Fran Marola, tomorrow to take those hoops down based on, on guidance uh, from both the uh, governor pushing off phase three and, and the health department, and for us to be on the same uh, page with our surrounding towns. It's just, if not, it's just going to get worse, I believe, in my opinion. It's going to get worse as the only place open in, in, in town. So right. I think we've got to take them down out of abundance of caution and see where, uh, see what happens throughout the month of July and see where uh, the governor and, and the health department want to do with the high risk category. Okay. So, uh, I'd be happy to share the, the, the pictures uh, after the meeting and get those around if you're interested. Um, it, it was pretty, uh, pretty intense um, in terms of number of people. So th th those are high, th very high numbers. Despite the effort to, to, to plaster with signage and, and so forth, just it wasn't uh, adhered to. Uh, that's essentially, that, that, that's my report at this point. Okay, thank you. All right, let's move into the uh, public hearing. I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> is it, it a couple things, Mike? I was just jotting down as you were talking. Is the town hall um, um, manned one hundred percent now? Employees? Yeah, not not exactly one hundred percent. I have a few exemptions uh, in in terms of employees, but essentially, yeah, I did call everybody back, uh, and uh, in, with the exception of a handful, not all here at town hall, but I think two or three here in a modified flex schedule working here uh, uh, for a part, few days a week and then remote working uh, at home. So, um, I, so then I'm assuming the greeter is probably an existing employee? Uh, no, part-time uh, part we brought in uh, just to help out. Uh, so didn't have somebody to pull from the other office. I tried to get um, some from the rec department, but given their, their concerns, they didn't want to uh, fill that position. 
Okay. And then on the COVID-19 cases, um, 88, are they all active? Is no. That, is that a no, that's just the cumulative in, in, in terms of active. I, I don't have that number. I said relatively few that okay. are active, but this is just since the start, yeah. we've had a, a total of, of okay. eight, 88 positive cases. Now, so that ne doesn't necessarily mean they were um, showing symptoms. They just, part of that could have been they just were um, tested positive? Correct. Okay. I'm just trying to clarify just so no, I no, know, understand yeah. the numbers. And then... Um, has anyone recovered that we know of in town? Oh, besides Bob. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just wondering about the, the stats. You know, I always hear that, that total number. I'm just wondering, you know, it, yeah, ticked up three more, but how are we, how are we doing as yeah. far as health-wise? Health, health yeah, we've Not necessarily. Right, we've lost five individuals, um, <clears throat> and, and, and all others have, have recovered. Okay, all right. Those five are accounted for in the 88? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, with the basketball, doesn't, doesn't that, does that fall under, doesn't part of um, what Governor Lamont said, something about or maintaining gatherings of 100 or something? I read that somewhere. Yeah, he's. You mean in terms of phases and how he's you right, know, right, right. Now we're we're going to stick with the gatherings of a hundred, and I'm asking, does that fifty four? You said fifty four people showed to play basketball. Does that is that part of a hundred a, a gathering of a hundred? I guess is what I'm asking. I, I don't think it applies. I, I'm not <clears throat> sure. That's a great question, but I, I think the concern is in terms of the the uh, nature of the sport uh, categorized as high risk because of its uh, close proximity, you know, and not having social distancing as opposed to a social gathering in which you can social distance and have 50 or, or, or more. So I, I, did drive, I did drive past there tonight and there was, again, a large gathering. Um, I didn't take count. If I had to guess, there was 40 plus people, some people parking on the grass right off of Route 80 in their vehicles and I did notice that most everybody I won't say none but pretty close to none had met were wearing masks or anything like that so right and they were you know they were playing the game and they were all close together on the court so yeah and and I had uh, Jesse obviously was on the the call the rec, rec director and I, I did do want to defer to her for a, a moment if uh, uh, if she wants to add anything to um, that discussion. Jesse, are you are available? You want to add anything to that? Hi, Michael. Um, just that the recommendation from our call and the surrounding towns was due to the nature of the sport being high risk that we maintain, um, take down our hoops and be in conjunction with everybody else. And then when we do open, um, looking at opening in a lesser capacity and in line with what other towns are doing. Okay, thank you. Now, one other question I have is, <clears throat> I know that I'm, our courts and our fields are, are, uh, are for the residents of the town, um, but how do, in a normal circumstance, how do we control that? Pretty, uh, in terms of monitoring? And, and well, is that is that part of what the park ranger uh, helps support or not? I'm, I'm just... Yeah, it um, hasn't been defined that way. C could be, uh, I think, internally, and maybe Jess, uh, you want to address that in, in terms of, I think the commission may have addressed it, I'm not sure, but with respect to uh, um, the question was about whether or not, in terms of monitoring, I don't know if you heard it or not, but. Uh, I heard it. Okay. Um, yeah, so in regards to monitoring, we currently haven't to my knowledge, regulated residents versus non-residents. That's not in the ranger's job description currently. Uh -huh. It's something we can evaluate. The problem too becomes with, and I'm not, I apologize, I'm new to the town. I'm not familiar with the funding, but if any state funding was used in regards to those courts, there are restrictions on how you can restrict non-residents. You actually can't restrict non-resident use if any state funding was used at any part for the parking lot, anything like that. So um, we would have to look back on what was used for the funding to to see if we could even disqualify non-resident use. 
Yeah, that, that won't qualify. Right. We did have state funding. Right. So then even on an, an, under normal, what I'd say were our previous circumstances before the pandemic, it, uh, if, if, out of, if people from out of town were playing on the courts, well, that's just how it is. Great. Right. The, on, the only right? thing, yeah, yeah the okay. only thing during the summer is we would have a youth, we would have a summer rec league out signed so that they would sign up for the, so they would have a permit actually for, oh, the, for the courts, right. whether it was Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday, and they might have it from six to nine or what, sure. whatever they ran. So they would have first preference. Right. But I don't believe that rec league is running this summer, correct? No, right. The summer okay. league, there, I, yeah. I believe, is not running. So, right. so with the court, so no one would have a permit. So right. they would just be open all the time. Okay. But if it was, then they would take preference. Right. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Not oh, sure. Okay. You all, Mike, you all set? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm good. Uh, let's do the the public hearing uh, re regarding regulations for layout. An assessment of sanitary sewers. So there was, uh, I printed out, I, hopefully it's in your, in, in your folder. Um, the correspondence to public comment was uh, from Don, Cap Don Capelli. Uh, so there should be a printout in your folder for that. Do we have to read the notice of the public hearing? Oh, yes, right. I, yeah, because it's a continuation, right? Well, it's, it's not it. a continuation, but it's, no, it's, it's a new public hearing. New public, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, you have, the, I, I have that if you don't. Well, I have it here. Okay. If you, Tom, are you going to read it or do you, it's page 40 in the iPad. So notice of a public hearing, um, Pursuant to Connecticut Executive Order 71, Section 19C, suspension, modification, and clarification of certain municipal procedural requirements and time limitations regarding notice, commencement, and holding of public hearings, decisions, and appeals, any covered, any covered law requiring a municipality or agency to publish it. any notice or notices in a newspaper of general or substantial circulation is suspended and modified to allow a single notice to be published electronically on a municipality's or agency's website. The North Brantford Water Pollution Control Authority will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 7th 2020 at 7.30 p.m. in the North Brantford Town Hall Council Chambers and or via Totuka TV slash Facebook Live. Public comment will be taken through email at public hyphen comments at town of North Brantford CT dot com. Facebook posts and direct dial 475-655-0000. The purpose of the public hearing will be to hear comments on propo um, proposed revisions to the regulations for layout and assessment of sanitary sewers. The proposed revisions to the re regulations for layout and assessment of sanitary sewers are to add the provision that designated a transient recreational vehicle parking spaces with connections for sanitary sewer hookups shall be recovered at the rate of one third unit per authorized connection under the units to be charged under determination of sewer assessment rates. Public, on, public comments on this matter are welcome. A copy of the proposed revisions are on file in the office of the town clerk and posted on the town's website. Dated at North Brantford, Connecticut this 10th day of June, 2020. North Brantford Water Pollution Control Authority. If I could just add, um, in the regulations for layout and assessment of sanitary sewers, um, the revision is on page eight and nine. And, and again, it's just adding a section, basically, and I'm just gonna read it, um, under, under residential <coughs> zones, 
by the B, we're adding notwithstanding 1A above, which talks about residential units for dwelling units. Um, no. On the above, designated transient recreational vehicle parking spaces with connections for sanitary sewer hookups shall be recovered at the rate of one third uh, unit per authorized connection. The other changes are just really uh, paragraph uh, structuring. Um, and again, the intent is to uh, apply a different connection rate to transient recreational vehicle parking spaces. The concept when I put it together, looking at it, the, the rest of the owner to, to see if it was feasible, was to look at the generally flow uh, generated by a recreational vehicle versus a normal home. And I came up with one sixth of a unit, um, the, the ratio to a, a normal home, but being conservative, we applied the rate of one third per unit. Um, to the uh, recreational vehicle sites. That was the concept that went into it. Um, we're open for any kind of discussion on it at this point. And again, this doesn't allow for a particular, this is global overall with the town with regulation. If anyone wanted to apply, if, if this were to be enacted and applied for it, they would have to make a request to the WPTA for an actual connection, and then we would look at the specifics of that connection. So it's about 4,100 per unit? That's correct. So just clarification, one-third, you're, you're, you mean one-third of, a, a say, a house? One-third of a, a unit. And, and, the 12. And the house is a unit. It's 12. The three. normal hookup fee. Right. fee. For, a, for yeah. a home. For a home. And then one. Right. So that's what it reduces it to. Yeah. What would the charge be for <coughs> somebody who is a permanent resident of the park in a long term? Well, the transient recreational is not, they're not permanent. I mean, it's okay, but the, the, in the uh, park, mobile for home units, again, are, in the regulations, there is something, the uh, age restricted. Again, we have to discuss that. I think town, the town attorney looked at, he, he, would, he would have, if they were to come in and apply for it, he would have to have them enter an agreement regarding that. But age restricted, they're at a rate of two thousand dollars per unit per current regulations. But he's not asking for he's any. Not asking for them. He's but only asking for the recreational vehicles at this time. That's what he's asking for at this time. Uh, again, he hasn't come in with an application to connect. He's talked about it and he's expressed a concern that a transient recreational parking space is paying would be paying such a high rate, he felt it was, you know, not feasible to, to do it. And they, they, they generate what, what that is the, What is the population of that park? That's the only park we have. That's, That's the only park. park. All right, so let's not talk in general. Yeah. We're talking about one space. They, one have, they have 15, the question came up, there's 15 uh, transient sites for recreational vehicles, ones that would apply for under this regulation. And he has 47 mobile home units. All right, so if I have a mobile home unit, I'm not a qualified senior. What do I pay? You're paying 2000 If they're age-restricted, they're $2,000. I'm not age-restricted. I'm 42 years old. What do I pay? You're paying $12,000. Okay, so the fact that it's a mobile home doesn't get any consideration over... Well, it, it does because he says that that section is HUD-approved and age-restricted. So it's all age restricted. The mobile home, that's what I've been told. That's correct. I don't think the transients are, though. The transients are not. The transients are not. So they would be under, they would fall under this definition. So he's looking for a discount because he's saying that the, the sewer usage is not going to be that it's of a. It's nominal compared to a normal house. Right. Because they're not they're there not the full year. How do we police the occupancy of the age restricted units and how do we police whether or not the 15 designated transient units are indeed only occupied by transient users? We'd have to, uh, I, we'd 
have to put that into any approval that maybe have an annual verification, certification of that. Um, the town attorney has started to address the concept of the, some type of agreement. We haven't got that far yet. But I would think we would, we, we, you're 100% correct. We want to verify when they come in for an application, we need an, an engineer plan showing a layout and what would be connected and how they would be connected. And we have to be able to monitor that and verify that that it hasn't grown. So the transient, my guess would be, would be in one section. They're not it's intermittent the amongst the mobile homes. There's a, That's correct. And so he would have a like a plot plan or something to show us that here are the 15, here's 15 and here are the three or four or however many he wanted to originally hook up because and he, the details of the sewer connection because they have to have a connection point for at each of the sites those, those transit sites would be really subject to winter um, restrictions because there's no way that water will flow yeah in unless you have something you know if you have a heated system around it you, you got to keep everything from freezing right that's, that's so you don't, How many sites you, you don't have to worry about right. policing it in the winter and be the summer, spring, and fall. How many sites is he requesting, though, initially? Well, what he has, he was only talking a few, three, I think, initially. He was just talking about connecting three additional units over there. A total, when he indicated, he had 15 transient sites and I believe it was 47 mobile homes. Right, but he's not... He's not he's looking. He's not applying for that at this point. He just wants to hook up three initially, and then and then whatever. I think his long-term plan would be to connect the, the, the facility, the sanitary sewer. When he came in and he built his building on Kentucky Road, he put a substate, didn't he? Put he, he put an additional line in there right. with capacity while he was doing it, and he you know he discussed that, but the regulations were in place. But he just. It was easy to put the provision in there at that time and then deal with it later. So for those three spots, you're getting just about what one house would be as far as fees. Yeah, you get the 12-3. That would be correct. So, you have, Kurt, yeah, we have to read that? Kurt, yeah. where'd the 1-6 come from? That was his? Now that, that's what I looked at in terms of looking at the, uh, the state health department when they generate flows. They said I think it was something to the effect of 75 gallons per day per per unit versus a home generates more like 400 gallons per day per unit. So how'd the one six go to one third? Well, I, I, that was an arbitrary number. I was trying to be conservative. I not try. I didn't want to go down to one six. I'd rather go to one third to be a little conservative, and that was open for discussion. But that was my rationale behind it um, because they're all they're estimates. I was trying to err on the side of more caution. Anyway. So if we had asked you to pick a number, what would you pick? Between one sixth and one third. Well, I, I picked a third. I, I, it, 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 it seemed reasonable uh, because it, again, you're dealing with estimates, and I, I wanted to estimate on a, the more cautious side. That's why I came up with one third because one sixth. That's that's not a definitive number. That's a ballpark. Have we been in contact with any other towns that may have the same? I, I tried. That was the first thing I did is to try to look out and see if there are other um, towns that had campgrounds in them with sanitary sewers in. I couldn't find any. Most of the campgrounds in the eastern part of the state, they don't have sewers in more rural areas. Um, he's the unusual one that has yeah. sewers. Did you call here. Bradford? Because Bradford has one right on Route well, 1. Well, they don't, they, those are mobile home units, so those aren't. The recreational vehicles. So forty. He has. So the other forty-seven sites he has are basically mobile home. Those mobile homes. And those are all age restricted. That's what he's. That's what he's expressed that they're uh, age restricted. And, 
and that was a concern. How do you we verify that long term as long as they're there that they have to be? And the town attorney has sort of worked something out on that, but it's too early to present that. But he felt there was something that could be in place to guarantee that. So that was a concern that came up with this board. Yeah, that, that's the only concern I have is during the winter time these units aren't. This sewer is not going to be used at that well, location. Well, you, you can sometimes you can put heat tape on them, and then if you protect them, that, that's good. If you get get the water in there, how do you get the well, water? Well, you got you got to get the water going in and, and, and the sewage going out. But if, if you get cold weather, it, it, they're they're problems. Right. That's something. I, th I think I think you're correct. A lot of times. So that, that's where my fine. that's where my opinion of one third might be a little bit high because these probably won't be used in the winter time. Yeah. I mean I, I he's aware of it. Uh, I was up front right from the beginning of it and I went through the rationale of how he calculated it. Well, that can be that's subject that's it's what that's was his good. take on the one third? He he was okay with that. I mean obviously he preferred lower but understood the rationale behind where it came from. Is this a seasonal park? Not the mobile home part, the transient. Is it well, seasonal? Well, he has, and I think he has some through the winter. Um, no, yeah, so there's not a cutoff, you know, start date and a cutoff like, date? Uh, opens April 1st and ends October 1st. No, because they get a, but he gets, I think, a lot of people working in the area. They come up from somewhere else and they stay for six months or three months because mm -hmm. they're doing their job. So Mike, what were you concerned with failure? Like no, if, if it was winter? Was, was a winter time. That's you know, what I mean. th those will freeze up quick, you know, and there's no way he's gonna get um, work in there. Um, I knew one of the guys that worked for the uh, power lines, putting the big overhead power lines in. He was up here, they come up here, you know, in the spring and then they leave in the fall because they really don't work on the power lines over the winter. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just too cold and you know, if it's a third, you know, it might be a little bit too much for too long of a period of time. You know, that's a third of that sewer connection fee for the year. So yeah, I, I didn't want to give the store away. Right. I wanted to start somewhere and then. But uh, have it. But he only pays it if once. So but he can still, he still. I mean, he only pays it once, and then he just keeps renting out those spaces every year. So it's not like he pays it every time. A, Transient. Well, there would be a user fee, wouldn't there? Yeah, the user well, fee is user separate. Fee, the rental. Pay the annual user fee. You know, yeah. If this doesn't change anything on that, they still pay that one unit. And he'll be saving money because he won't have to pump out as much. Now, I think the residents required, uh, the transient resident would be required to have the um, septic system or whoever pumps out the trailers must be somebody that comes through that pumps up the trailers that well now connected. they're connected aren't they hooked up right now into a septic they're, they're on septic that's yeah. what i mean so the he'll transients. be saving. yeah the transients are on, and i think he's talking about maybe an additional i'm not 100 percent sure on this whether he it's an additional three or he, he wants to start with the, the first three maybe there's a problem right over that area with the septic i'm not, I'm not but his first concern was to hook up few of them and then this is a long term you know the, the hookup would be a phase in approach I think it's an economics and they just want to but it, back to the winter yeah. it, is there a possibility that the system fails and doesn't work because it freezes and then we have a contamination issue no, well I mean it'd be gravity you have to put Pump things, you have to put pumps in there. I mean, they're below grade, they're, they're freeze protected. Okay. I don't see that as an issue. Okay. That's what I was thinking. No, Ron, I mean, Ron you know from draining your tank it's a line from in the, the winter unit. time, you know, from the unit down to the ground. Right. But the, the only other thing I'm thinking of, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not an expert by any means on it, is the other mobile homes are not that much different. That are recreational vehicle. A lot of them are still 
on on wheels and axles, and they they're hooked up year round. So I'm just wondering, you know, they're able to deal with it. Um, there must be a way for there's a way the RVs to deal with it too. Right. You know, if someone's going to be here for six months through the winter, they've got to protect them. Right. But you, but to your point, Mike, it, it would be. The uh, amount of, I would imagine, the amount of transient people going through there in the winter time would be far, far less than over the summer. Yeah. The board contractors, you have nurses, that people come to the, the Yale, and the, that's where you describe that he has the transient. That's all I have. <coughs> All right, and, and there is one correspondence that's from the owner of the Kentucky uh, uh, Valley Mobile Home in Army Park. And uh, I'll read it quickly. Uh, Dear count, Town Council, please carefully consider the change which will greatly improve our ability to start converting our park from 50 year old septic systems to modern sewers. As you may know, our park borders the Farm River, which is an RWA watershed area. We feel it is everyone's best interest to connect us to the sanitary sewer system. As we have multiple recreational vehicle sites, this change will allow us to financially be able to make these connections. At the current rate of $12,400 per unit, the fee is cost prohibitive for an RV site that is not consistently occupied. This would not pertain to or affect the mobile home units in the park if they are already HUD regulated, age restricted. Thank you for your consideration, Thomas Lapel, Kelly Jr., Kentucky Land Holdings LLC, Kentucky Valley Mobile Home and Army Park. I did. There's a public hearing tonight. I did write up anything. discussion with Eddie and, and came back with some ideas as to just how this is going to be enforced. I'm a little bit concerned about charging one third and theoretically they're there. Mike says it's impossible to be there in the winter. I'll take that as, as accurate, but two thirds of the year they're there. And I assume uh, they're, they're generating sewage. So I'd like to know that we can police it and it's not a permanent resident somebody coming down. Yeah. What what are you charging them for a user fee on that? A lot. That I didn't hook up. Didn't change anything on that. I mean user fee they're they're a unit, so they pay the unit rate. Which is fee, which is four fifty we say it's four four seventy five a year. Per a year. Um, so he'll charge them back yeah, to the uh, so they're so because we don't differentiate between a five-bedroom house and a one-family, or, or, or one-bedroom house. Our regulations are, are for a dwelling unit is a dwelling unit. So I didn't seek to make an adjustment in that. He didn't ask for that. We accepted that part. This is just a fee to the town, right? He's still responsible for paying to have the the sewers hook get the actual work done? To do the work is all on him. And, and to make, he's got to put a pumping station or, or a tube in there. Those are his operating things. And what do you? He, he has the ability, I mean, what, what he paid for is the ability to, make, to discharge into our sanitary sewers and be rid of them. Do we have any idea what that's going to cost him? Uh, you cut your line. I don't know what his layout is. Or not. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, next meeting's fine. We get some input from our town attorney and 
and also uh, this is a public hearing and maybe town residents may have a, some comments or someone else may have a comment right you're going to talk to the property owner between them he knows yeah I, i've been talking to him all along I mean, okay. i've shared everything with him just so he knows what the, the thought process is and uh, you know what the issues are that's fine thank you okay and joe you had you had you had questions that no, you, would, I, you would like Kurt, to answer? I think Kurt understands what my concern is. He shares it, so yeah. I just wanted to talk to Vinny by, before the next meeting, so maybe he can come back and give us some okay. some additional information or comfort as to how they're going to. What I anticipate is, is trying to just address any of the concern or how they would be addressed, and then have a motion to accompany it with it and be yeah, excited fine. about. Okay. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. So do we have to continue the public hearing or we can close it? Yeah, that's that's your call there, right, Kurt? I mean, you can go either yeah, way. It's a public hearing unless yeah. there's any yeah. other public comment. Do you want to check and see if there was any public comment? Yeah. I mean, most likely the only public comment was Don's that I you mean, read. Because that's the only one that will probably apply to unless something changes. No, no, no other comments. <coughs> okay, so we have to close it. You can close the public hearing. Yes. There's no reason to keep it open. No. Okay. All right, so we'll close that public hearing and uh, move, in, move into uh, community events and presentations. Mayor, could you just call the time for the clerk uh, closing the public hearing? Okay. Eight. Uh, let's see. 8.05. Thank you. And then does it need to be a motion to do so? I'm, I don't think I'll, we need I'll, I'll clear it up. I'll make a motion yeah. to close yeah, the public hearing you. at 8.05 p.m. Thank Second. You. Thank you. Okay, motion was made by Councillor Duty, seconded by Councillor Angeloni. Uh, any further discussion? Do we have a, a vote, Michelle? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Okay, we'll move into uh, community events and presentations. No, I'm sorry, none. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Uh, then we'll move into citizen statements, petitions, and correspondence. Correspondence from uh, A is correspondence from Courtney Cucinata regarding in Indigenous People Day. Do you have anything on that, Mike? Uh, no, just for for your uh, for you in consideration. Um, you know, not sure if that's something the council wants to deliberate on. I don't know what we do with it. It's in the record. It's in the record. Submitted. Okay. You don't have to take action. So then it's then it's all set. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, next is re resignations and appointments. None. There aren't any. Uh, so we'll move to unfinished business discussion and action. Discussion on RFQ slash P or North Bamford Police Facility Architectural and Engineering Service. Right, so we're engaged with uh, Bill Silver, and uh, he submitted the uh, revised or updated um, uh, contract proposal. So it's there uh, for your review and consideration. And he has included a uh, timeline that he went through with the uh, advisory committee at the last meeting and walked through uh, these items. There's a Item, if you go to, uh, I think it's page four of the uh, compensation. I don't know if the uh, item, the f I guess it's the uh, item four, construction administration, uh, could be the one item I think you might want to discuss or talk about, um, and or get a recommendation from the committee in terms of uh, construction administration. Uh, but essentially, this. 
uh, has been reviewed by uh, Vin Marino as well, um, looks in order, it's just revised uh, numbers to take you all the way through uh, the final construction um, of the, the project for the PD. Okay. So do we have to approve tonight whether we want construction administration or is this something that we can decide? Like if we I, I, approve this and we decide it, we wanted a clerk of the works ourselves that we don't need, you know, to pay yeah. um, Silver Petrizuli. Yeah. It's we a, just don't right, do that great, part of the contract. Great, great question. And I think you're, I think you got the, the timing. I would recommend that, you know, th this is for your consideration. That's one of the questions that you've got the committee meeting on the uh, ne next week on the 15th. Uh, so it's in time in terms of having them you know, discuss it as well, make a recommendation, come back here for the council for the 21st. Do you like to do it that way? We really need to gear them up for their design services. Construction administration yeah. Yeah, is, it's, it's is a little down. ways. Right, right. right. that's sure. right. I, I so didn't I'd, rather, I'd rather hear from Al Rose and his group, as to, particularly from Alice, and what he thinks hmm. we should or shouldn't do before we commit spending more money. Well, the police station is not... I didn't think we sent it to the ad hoc review committee. It's at no. it's with the other it's with the P D committee. And it's he's not, not part of that? Yeah, Al yeah, Al's, 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 oh, part Al's of on that, that one. Yeah. yeah. Also Oh, okay. Sorry. I, a couple yeah. of years ago I specifically asked is he on each yeah. of the construction because yeah, so the police department advisory committee is having another meeting, so Okay. We yeah, they're gonna meet back to back fourteenth, fifteenth, yeah. So are, are they, is the advisory committee for the police department, do we need to approve anything to get to schematics so they can start on schematics? No, or are we waiting for them to meet next week? They're, they're, already, per, they're already proceeding and, and again, this Silver is just Petrizzoli's a- Silver Petrizzoli's already proceeding with yeah. schematics? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Nothing's holding up, that, that I'm aware of, nothing's holding them up. In fact, we're gathering information. Uh, Kurt was able to supply information with respect to gas, and, and, and I know that they're working uh, to gather information. So, yeah, it, it, it's on track, and they're okay. going to meet next week. So I think okay. we can line everything up for, uh, you know, their meeting and then your future meeting on the 21st. So this, this fee that's quoted in here, 297 750 that's already been approved, or do we need to act on that? Well, I think you'll want to you'll want to you'll want to act on that on the 21st, and knowing whether or not, uh, or having a recommendation as to whether or not you are going to add in the construction fee or or pull that out. Okay. So I'll add, uh, it'll just I guess a motion to table that, and we can uh, bring that back for uh, the 21st. So would it make sense on the 21st to have? A representative here from that police department committee to help advise us on or at least a report or a report or something so that we well, know how to act on that well, Mike yeah. you're on you're on that oh I yeah. Sorry, Mike, Mike's I on that committee and so is Marie right yeah right okay <clears throat> so we have two council people okay I need a do I need a motion to table that I make a motion to table it all right second <coughs> Motion was made by uh, Councilor Duty, seconded by Councilor Angeloni. Any further discussion? Have a, uh, vote, please, Michelle. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, next we have a discussion on solar power project with Citrine Power, tabled uh, from June 16, 2020. Um, two weeks ago, I asked for information on uh, contact and locations of this. I haven't received it yet, so I'm making a motion to table that till that next meeting, and hopefully, we'll get those that information first. Well, I think Celia uh, uh, Chellis here, uh, and I think Roger has the. Um, well, I, I didn't get that information, so that's why I'm making a motion to table it. I don't think we should be going any further until. The information we requested two weeks ago is on our desk, and we get a chance to go and look at the sites or contact people. So that's my motion as the table. Okay. 
Yeah, they're, they're here and they, they can, I'm just, they're here to present and they have information they can go through in a presentation. Oh, I can't, I didn't hear her. I, I didn't hear what she said. Uh, she's just echoing the same thing I just said or I echoed to what she said about in terms of information is here and she has information that she can present and that's the purpose of uh, being on the agenda to present. You have information tonight? I, I already sent the information tonight. Well, um, we never I, got it. Well, you have, yeah, you have. I, I have, I emailed our contact information already. And sites? Yeah. Huh. It's funny, it goes there and then just stops. Well, we have sites, but we don't have confirmation. We don't, unless Roger has something. But two weeks ago, we asked for sites and locations that we go out and look at, and that's the reason I asked for that information two weeks ago, and we never received it. Okay, what if, what if we keep your mo your motion, Mike, and we listen to what they have to say? Well, as then, long as you get a second, you can keep it. It's motion out there. Well, I'll second it. Okay. <clears throat> Motion was made by Councilor Duty, seconded by Deputy Mayor uh, Zampano. The table. Any any discussion? Yeah, just for clarification, because the discussion has been going on back and forth with the audience, we are voting on what tabling this mm -hmm. item. Yes. Correct. Even though we've got people here with information that can share with us. We asked two weeks ago for information. Right. I, I'm not criticizing. And we you. haven't. We haven't got that. Doing. She said it's, it was it was sent we never got it so in order to get it, go out and look at the sites so we could have some discussion back and forth as to what the sites are portraying and what they look like and what they don't look like now again we're going to hear another presentation on, on this on the same site where we don't know if it's right wrong or indifferent on their previous sites I, I, I hear you I, I your criticism's a fair one just want to know what I'm voting on that's it <coughs> uh, well, well, the uh, the other thing, you know, we second it so we can have discussion. So, should should we um, let them let the power company make their presentation so we know what what changes they may or may not have made? Well, unfortunately, it's not the power company's fault that we didn't get the information. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying it is. I'm, I'm, but I'm, what I'm saying I mean, is, I, I feel bad for punishing them. If she if if she never sent it, then I would say come back in two weeks. Right. You know. But well, we have any discussion from the council members? Well, the, the, the discussion right I'm now is, is to hearing what they have to say. I don't see how that yeah in any way prejudices us. But I understand Mike's criticism. Mm. It's it's a reasonable. Guys do too. I think we should definitely table it until we have the information that we requested. Uh, but I also think that she was nice enough to come out here tonight. She has a little bit of information or additional information. Yeah, I have no problem hearing her because yeah. it's not her fault. So yeah. I can't, I can't put the blame on her. But before you leave, you should get our email addresses so you can send it to each person. So there's no mistake in the future. Mr. Mayor, this is Elizabeth Kaplan. May I, I'm the chair of the Economic Development Commission. May I speak for a moment, Hi, please? Of course, of course. Well, we have a motion on the floor. I'm so right? sorry. It is very wait, wait, hard to hear. Wait, wait a minute, Liz. Hang on a minute. So, I mean, the, the motion's on the floor, and yeah, it's been second for discussion. So, so is. The motion, I mean, it was to table. Is it to table not to take any action, but we'll listen to the presentation, or is it just to stop the discussion right now? I just have a question. So I got where you're coming from, Mike, all right? So my understanding at this point in time, correct me, is that she sent the information in. It just never was translated to us. Am I correct? Am well, I correct? I'm yeah. not pointing fingers at you, Michael. Yeah, no, it's, I, she, I, I, I get so, it. We failed as North Brantford to get it out to us. Right. My mistake, <coughs> yeah. It t I pushed out a lot of information in terms of citrine power and, um, you know, the, the contract, the, the service. We were looking at, Mike had asked, or whoever had asked about, you know, location, oh, location, I got it. locations. And we have locations uh, in terms of addresses and references we were going to check. And, and Rod Roger has, has 
has done that has I don't that, last time conversation I had with Roger he has not that, heard that, back that from wasn't, them. That wasn't the discussion. It wasn't have Roger check it out. It was for us to have that information. Mike, I agree with what you're saying. For us to check it out. But I agree with what you're saying, but I also agree these people came and like you said, I don't think they've done anything wrong. No. So yeah. I think we owe it to them to listen to them and your concern. I certainly don't want I certainly don't want to look through Roger's eyes at a site. No, I, I understand that. I, 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 Rod, Roger may have rose colored glasses and not see what I see. Mike, I understand that. I agree with you. But my issue is is that these people came out, they sat very patiently well, that's, that's and why they've I, done nothing that, wrong. That's why I said they did nothing wrong and I have no problem listening to them. That's but, you and I are on the same page, brother. Then, then why don't we listen to them? Uh, I don't know what to do with the motion. We've got to deal with this motion yeah. that's on the floor. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we, we, take, vote on we take no action tonight, um, and, but we listen to our discussion. Seems fine to me. I agree. Then we'll look at it again in two weeks. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Who was that, Lou? Yeah. Okay. Michelle, did, did you get all of that? Yeah. <laughs> I know, but the other motion was to table. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Gotta be withdrawn. Yes. Withdrawn. So that has to be withdrawn. And I'll top. withdraw my second. First. Okay. Yeah. So that that motion's been yeah. withdrawn, and yeah. the new motion is I'll to right. Okay. Motion. <laughs> Not take any action, but listen to the dis to okay. what they have to present. Yeah. The motion motion was made by Councilor Duty, seconded by Councilor Pennemaster. Yeah. I'm not going to say any further discussion. <laughs> uh, no. Is there any more discussion on that? No. no. We've confused ourselves yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michelle, can we have a vote on that? Which one? The second one. <laughs> we're oh, going to take no action, but we're going to listen to the presentation yeah. from okay. the people from the Citrus. So the motion withdrawn by um, Council Duty and Deputy Mayor Zampano, and then the motion to take no action but hear the information made by Duty and Councilor Paternoster. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone oh. abstain? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Did you want to? Can she come up to the table here? Sure. Mike. And uh, yeah, we may have. Uh, I got to release the screen. If are you going to do a Hi there. slide? Hey. Hey. Good evening. I think there was well, while I'm trying to uh, power up, somebody wants to say something. I'm trying to gain some time because my Zoom is not working right now. Um, so Liz had asked. Yeah, if Liz she could had a say. question. Liz, are you there? She's on mute. She's Liz, do uh, you want to unmute? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Mayor is recognizing you to speak. Yeah, I'm going to unmute myself. Okay. Mayor is recognizing you to speak. Are you there? You're, you got to unmute again. Mike's not on, Liz. There you go. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor and council members. I, I apologize. It's I have my volume on my computer up all the way, and it's really hard to hear the discussion in, in the town hall. And, and thank you for giving Citrine the opportunity to present tonight. I, I understand all of your concerns. We understand all of your concerns, the Economic Development Commission. Um, what, what I just would like to say is please listen to the information with an open mind. The town has absolutely zero investment in this. The town does not have to put out $1 towards the investment of this potential project that could yield, and I'm being super, super conservative when I say, and this is even much lower than they're going to tell you, but $50,000, let's just say. And it's money that the town hasn't had, has the potential to have now, and then a lot more than that, I'm sure. And one of the things we discussed at our economic development meeting um, last night was that if this project after 25 years, the lease is up, with these panels, it does not permanently alter the landscape. These panels can be torn, put, taken down, dismantled, and it can go back to a farm. It is not going to permanently alter the landscape, as I just said. 
Um, you know, Mark can do with what he wishes with the property. He can build houses on it if he wishes. He is, you know, he is trying to help the town in investment. Yes, I'm sure he will make money as he should. And I'm just asking you, this is a win-win for this community. I realize the, the current site it, it's a site where the sunflowers are. You know, I'm also involved with Sunflower Project as well, and it's near and dear to our hearts as a community. I, I think we have to balance the this potential for cost savings to the town with the bucolic nature of our town at the same time. And the Economic Development Commission is always thinking of this Roger is always thinking of this when he's talking to potential businesses that come to our, that, that may come or are interested in coming to our community. So I understand what you're saying, Mr. Du Mike, uh, regarding wanting potential sites. I know Chella has a lot of information to give you, but please um, listen to her with an open mind because this could be a very good thing for our community. They have been working uh, with with us to try to find a compromise. So we benefit from it and they can, uh, you know, put their solar panels up and do their thing. So thank you for your time. And um, I look forward to hearing this presentation. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, I think it is shared. Okay. Um, 
um, that we removed, but we, we wanted everyone um, to uh, be happy with the way that everything looks. There's going to be a fence around it, as we spoke about it before. Um, and there's going to be all sorts of environmental studies before we submit to the siding council. So that's just our initial um, compromise so that we, uh, from Forest Field, there's not that much of a view. Um, and we're going to have a planting, um, a plant, more or less, um, in front of the uh, fence, a landscaping plant, so that we can um, uh, propose some uh, planting. There's very large trees at the, at the um, top there, uh, at, 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 on Forest Road, actually, right here. We're hoping to enhance those large trees. And um, now that we're 200 feet away, there's not going to be any shading issues for us anyway. Um, and we'll put more right in front of the fence and along along the lines up here. Now you see here, there's already a natural buffer. We're not going to be cutting any trees. And here on the satellite, it looks like there's a natural buffer, but when you actually go, there's, there's not that much. We will put a buffer here so that the houses here don't see it actually. We're going to put a lot of plantings around here. As you can see, it's already set back from our townhouse, and there's not going to be any shading concerns for our, for our purposes anyway from this side. What we also want to focus on on tonight's meeting is, um, you know, I know there's a lot of concern, and I'm, I, I, I actually hear and very much appreciate that everyone's very, you know, um, it, it's a collaborative approach. Everyone, everybody wants to have a, uh, input about the way it looks, how it might um, look within the character of the town, etc. But I want to emphasize the benefit um, to the town. There is no out-of-pocket cost to the town, um, only savings, no construction risk for the town. If we can't build, if we fail, if we can't get our permit, nothing happens. We, as if nothing happens to the town, basically. You just, you know, move on to the next thing. Um, it does not impact your current power supply agreements. You can keep on buying your power um, in, in, you know, uh, in collaboration with a third party supplier or with other towns, you can negotiate as low as you want with United Illuminating, this is on top of it. Um, the flexibility of the beneficial accounts, we can change once a year the beneficial accounts, which the town accounts are going to be benefiting from the um, net metering, and obviously it supports a local farm. Um, you know, as, as, as we brought up before, we don't want the savings to kind of, um, not to be at considered at all because that's probably one of the biggest benefits for to, to the town here. Um, we did a quick analysis when we were sizing this project and we looked into all of North Brantford's United Illuminating accounts. Um, there's about 15 accounts that that more or less total um, their annual consumption three and a half million kilowatt hours. That is more or less what a two megawatt solar system produces, about 3.2 million kilowatt hours. And we take the largest nine accounts to be the beneficial accounts, which make up 97% of the consumption and 92% of um, of the total cost, electricity cost, as of right now. And um, and I've shown this before, but maybe maybe we kind of um, really didn't go through it. The way it works is under the virtual net metering incentive, United the limit that we we build a system. Um, we push the power through the three phase lines to United Illuminating. We're just another power plant. We tell them which town we're working with and which farm we're working with. United Illuminating credits that town and farm at the top retail rate, and um, and then the town pays us a discounted version of that. And the difference between those two rates is the savings. The $90,000 that we've been kind of floating around right now is a very conservative approach because we're assuming the United Illuminating rates, the generation rate, the TNV rate, the transition distribution rate is not going to go up at all. Um, the first few years are the most, you know, you're, you're gonna realize the most savings a lot more than $90,000. And there are two different models that we can actually do with that we've been doing with different towns. We can enter, if you, if you choose to enter into a contract with us at the discounted rate, we can do a fixed rate discount, um, like we discussed last week, or we can do a floating rate discount. How does it work? Fixed rate discount, you lock into it, you know, discount um, for the next 20, 25 years. And um, initially, in the, you know, in the initial years, we can foresee where things are going to go, you have a lot of savings. If we do a floating rate contract, you're always below what UI is going to credit you, 
and there's a floor to it, obviously, but um, you pay a lot more in the initial years, but you're kind of hedging yourself to be always underneath that net illuminating um, rate. Um, you know, when you get a chance to talk to our references, and, and I'll tell you actually, we have a bunch of, we got a list from United Illuminating of all the towns in United Illuminating territory that is um, under this program, that's making use of this program. Uh, I'll read them to you. Bridgeport, Derby, East Haven, Hamden, Milford, North Haven, Woodbridge. Um, I guess Hamden has two projects and North Haven has three projects. Um, you can talk to them. Um, if you have a friendly relationship, and you can talk to our Eversource um, references that, um, that we're going to provide one more time, just to be clear. Um, and there are a couple of suggested, uh, I don't know why, I'm not, hold on, let me see if I can make it bigger. Um, there were, you know, we've been presenting to different, um, you know, constituents in town trying to get their perspective and, and everybody's involvement. Um, we will put a pollinator path around the fence uh, we want to continue the sunflower garden around the fence, it, um, and we can have a local um, landscaper that was suggested to, um, that, that has been very involved with the sunflower uh, project, I, I guess, to, to, to work with us around the buffers and the um, planting. Um, the board, I, I guess um, it came up in the um, EDC meeting, and, and I think Liz was probably the one that suggested this. Um, can we have educational curriculum in partnership with the DOE and the Sustainability Committee, yes, we always do this. Um, we do build on the roofs and on the carport parking lots, et cetera, in a variety of states uh, of schools, and we always provide an educational curriculum, um, depending on how you want it to be. It could be more sustainability focused, it could be more engineering focused. Um, we could do schedule and guided school field trips. The reason why I'm um, focused a little bit on the um, schools here, the beneficiaries in almost all towns and 90% of the time are the schools because they are the biggest consumers of electricity. Um, and some, there was um, there was a suggestion, which I thought was a great suggestion actually, because this is a farm and municipal um, contemplated um, a virtual metering uh, project, um, doing a raised canopy right where we thought we pushed everything 200 feet in um, to cover that canopy's um, top with solar panels and make it maybe a town farm stand or a, any kind of recreation area where the kids can actually do outside classes. You know, the world's our oyster, but we can do our, a, a small raised canopy um, right, right at the front. Um, and we can call it a, you know, North Grandford Charm Stand, um, however you guys want to name it. So we're happy to um, put some added benefits that's going to um, benefit the general community um, overall. But the biggest benefit is obviously the savings um, to the town. Um, with that, I'll just um, stop, um, and I know we, you know, we, we did have a desired action item from our end, but I understand that you're not going to take that action right now, so that's just, um, that's our presentation, so if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. So how much, what's an estimated cost to decommission after whatever the contract is, 20 years or 25 years? What is the cost? We can send you the cost, actually, um, if you, oh. No, I'm sorry, I just cleared my throat. <laughs> uh, we can send you the cost, you can calculate it. There's a very detailed calculation that we actually do with um, decommissioning and hauling, how many trucks it's going to take, uh, with the racks taken out, with the panels taken out. Some of them go to close by landfill, we have to calculate. We could provide all of this to the siting council as a decommissioning plan. I you're gonna take a copy, you're gonna get a copy of this thing anyway. Well, my, con my, my concern well, is, mm -hmm. my concern is if you are not in business 20 yeah. or 25 mm -hmm. years from now, mm -hmm. that the town doesn't get stuck with the decommissioning cost because it could wipe out all of our savings right. that we had for all of those years. So. Yes, it won't be that much, and I'll give you a calculation of how we see it, of course, for 25 years down the road, what decommissioning would be in today's dollars. We have a calculation, and I'm happy to give that to you. It does not going, it's not going to wipe out your savings, but you'll compare it yourself. It, on top of that, we've seen, or and we have done this before, um, so when we go to the siding council, um, that permit is a non-ministerial permit, is what we call it, right? Um, it's an environmental assessment, and it's the first step between the siding council and the deed that allows the project to happen. But when it comes to construction, we then have to come to town to get our building in electrical. Sometimes we've seen the towns actually ask us to post a decommissioning bond as part of the building permit. We've done this in Massachusetts many, many times. That's what the norm is in Massachusetts. Um, and we also, um, it's a private transaction between the 
landlord and us, but this is the landlord's concern as well, right? You know, we're going in there saying that we're going to preserve your farmland for the next 25 years by putting in our panels instead of use, you know, doing a development. You know, when his kids want to take the panels out, what's going to happen? So there's some provisions to the landlord as well to be able to take those out economically at the end of the uh, at the end of the life the life cycle. But I think a part making it a part of the building permit is the norm that we see. So I suggest that you may may, may be something that you might consider. Are there any hazardous materials? No, actually, not. Um, so I, I, I will circulate this. There's um, this actually came up and always always comes up. Um, the North Carolina um, uh, North Carolina State University Technology um, Department actually did a fantastic study about the common questions asked: um, hazardous materials, is it landfill material? Uh, are we going to get? Um, you know, is our water going to get contaminated? How deep do you want to go into this? The cadmium elements, etc. So I don't want to bore you with all of these things right now, but I'm happy to give you a copy of this so that you can. But when we decommission, is any of that no. going to be considered no. hazard? No, it's okay. not going to be hazardous. It's actually, and you, if you think about it, um, there's a new program called Shared Community Energy Program in, in Connecticut. Um, it's widespread across the Northeast, but it's new in Connecticut. Um, the um, state Pura is giving preference for those solar projects on top of landfills and brownfields. Um, they want us to build on top of those um, because it's a very good use of property. And um, they permit them. Um, they love it because they don't think that we're going to be puncturing anything and bringing extra hazardous material on top of that. But no, no hazardous material. Mike, the report she's re is that what you sent us at 5.30 tonight? So we already have that in PDF yeah. form, right? right? Is that what you, okay. Correct. So that was sent to all of us Correct. already. Okay, excellent. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. One uh, more question? <laughs> you chosen this site, and I know you mentioned the last time you were here, the proximity to the state highway is of critical importance to you. But the town also has a decommissioned landway site, which is not far from Route 8. Landfill? It's, it's, landfill? it's nothing now. Are you talking on Ciro Road? Yeah. Yeah, the old dump. I don't know what, the, in terms of feet it is from Route 80, but it's not miles from Route 80. Mm -hmm. Have you considered that parcel? Um, it's a great question. We would love to consider that. Typically, the towns, before they actually um, lease their properties, um, sometimes they choose to go for an RFP. So I really didn't be, didn't want to be presumptuous and approach a town, a municipal property, saying that, hey, would you like to do a bilateral contract on a lease? We're, we're more than happy to give you all the information. If you still want to go to an RFP, it would be educational for you when you're considering others. And we would put our name into the hat as well. Uh, but no, we didn't really approach the town. It's easier for us uh, and probably uh, a little bit more straightforward to work with uh, private land landlords. Um, if there was an RFP, which we'd be more than happy to participate. Joe, my suggestion is in lieu of where you are now. What um, you're talking about is in addition to. <coughs> in addition to, exactly. Yeah. Joe, the only problem is that the only way they're going to get under this program is they have to get a farm to buy into it. If they don't get a farm to buy into it, then this program doesn't exist. But, but, so the farm that bought into it, it doesn't matter where it is if it's virtual net metering, right? Right. Right. It, right. It's right. going to be within the area. Well, it, yeah, but if the it's... the same power grid. I don't know if Northeast Utilities is down that way. No, uh, it's UI. So, uh, U, UI. On Zero Road? Yeah. Off of Nutshell? Yeah, I think all, all of, everything pretty much North UI Brantford is yeah. UI. Yeah. Yeah. You have, everything has to be UI territory. And we, yes, we could have picked a farm next to my house or, you know, if, if it was a new UI territory. But we we wanted to make it a town project. We picked one of the oldest dairy farms in town. Um, and um, we think it's beneficial to them. And um, they do actually also um, lease some property from the same landlord to farm. Um, so it all came together um, from our standpoint. You know, you, you, you be the judge for your pr perspective. We're giving you the information, of course. We're not you know, making any uh, presumptions here. But we think it's a, it's a, um, it all comes
come together just nicely for now to not be going backwards. Yeah, I, I think the issue is with Ciro Rojo is not the um, it's not the farm issue. It, it's the fa it's three phase. I'm not sure how far three phase power is. It's not location to eighty. It's it, it, eighty's got obviously it's got eight, three phase power. It's just how how long she's got to, the, the company's got to pull three phase power to get in there. And I believe it was evaluated was from a okay. previous solar company, um, and it was I know Kurt was involved, and it was just not suitable. Um, the size of it, it's not as big as it's not it's really all that that big. And it's a, a slope is very. There's only a small, smaller level area. The rest of it, it's sloping. It's got a lot of shade. Yeah. The sloping. Um, the reason why we can't build on uh, sloping capped landfills is because um, we typically put vertical screws into the ground, uh, you know, on a regular property. Um, but in landfills, we can't puncture the cap. Um, cap. So we have to put them on big ballast blocks. Um, and you can't put the ballast blocks uh, above 15 degree slope because then they will start sliding down. And um, so a lot of landfills are sloped actually. And uh, we're, we're building one in New Jersey right now in, um, in Capcom. And that had a very steep slope as well. And when you look at it, it doesn't look that bad, but um, the racking company and the ballast company, they will not warranty any of it. And you know, it has to be safe staying on fresh stone. We couldn't get into the you know, uh, capacity that we want, so I suspect that's what's happened there too. Plus, if you're far away from three phase, we don't have to be close to a highway. We just have to be close to the electrical line, three phase electrical line. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so we'll move into a uh, new business uh, discussion and action. Review, review and approval of bid uh, number two, 2020-2021. Specifications for replacement of Burnham cast iron section of the boiler for North Brantford Auditorium. Is this part of, is this in their CIP? I don't remember this being in, as a capital project. So I was just wondering why we got the bid specs for this. I don't know how they got, uh, how they're gonna pay that. Because I didn't remember, I mean, there was nothing presented during the budget season and I don't remember talking about this at all, so. I was just wondering why it came to us then. If the if the Board of Ed was paying for it themselves, why we got the bids back for it. Mm. Because don't we generally only get them if it's in the CIP as a capital project? Yeah, <laughs> in, in, in this case, I, I think it was unforeseen and, and um, Mm -hmm. Cast iron. Yeah. And I don't recall. It's uh trying to remember if this was the same one that he was looking for, Bill Chody was looking for with respect to, um, no, that was TBS that he had a problem with. Um, I mean, because I've never heard of any discussion on this, that the Board of Ed has come before us on for the auditorium for the boilers, so that's... Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any notes on that. Um, and simply take table that to the next meeting and help Bill Chody write up a report for the vet or from the Board of Ed as to why it came this way. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I, I just, I mean, just reading the, you know, they want it done by September 1st, and, you know, someone has to take action on it. I, I just don't know where this money's coming from. Or even an estimated, I know they're going out to bid, but do they have an estimated cost? Is it 100000 50000 I make a motion we table it until we have further information. I'll second it. Okay. Motion was made by uh, Deputy Mayor Zampano, seconded by Councilor Policia. Any uh, further discussion? <coughs> we have a vote, Michelle. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay, next is a uh, discussion of possible action on repairs to police department. Yeah. Welcome, Chief. How are you? All right. Hi, Chief. How you doing? Good. So, <laughs> yeah. So as you know, there has been, uh, we, we found a leak in the attic. Um, with that, we found mold in the attic and we did an air quality test. Um, and it was confirmed with the air quality <coughs> test. So I believe it was, I'm not sure what meeting it was, but one of the counselors had mentioned maybe if we had some funds left in this year's budget to allocate the funds towards repair. So, so with that, I had no idea how much it would cost to repair or even replace the, uh, sorry, replace the, uh, the roof. So with that, we got a good. We got a couple quotes. Um, the first one was to uh, a total replacement of the roof uh, with mold mediation. Uh, it came out to about $66,000. Plus, we also located mold in the, uh, the basement. Um, it was an additional, I believe, $6,000 to mediate the mold in the basement, along with um, uh, scoping our septic system down in the basement. Um, the, the question was posed, well, could we put a patch on it to fix? Um, so we, we went back, we got a second second estimate. The patch, um, to, to get us hopefully for a couple of years, uh, would be 33,910. Uh, we would not um, do any, any work on the septic system, uh, just mediate the mold. Uh, basement and uh, this this is with the idea that we're building a new police department um, so we're looking for direction as to how we want to go with this what we want to do is it worth I don't know what the plans are for the, the old building um, after we're done do we want to put a new roof on it do we want to just patch it um, and of course this will probably have to go so it's like 33 to 66, basically, it's where you're... Did they say how many squares on the roof? Um, stand by. They talked about the sheet, uh, the plywood. Uh, there was, they estimated 30, 30 boards for the plywood, 30 sheets. That's the, that's the whole roof, Chief? The 30 that's, sheets? That's the whole no. roof. That's, uh, no, that's 30, 30 sheets. sheets the whole roof. No. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it but says, they're probably uh, estimating that. Strip, that. strip mm -hmm. existing roof shingles down to plywood. Coordinate with removal locations of police equipment on the, uh, the roof area. In other words, that's the antennas. This cost does not include, remember, our antennas on the roof, um, as well as the microwave. So um, we had tried to get a, a quote from Tactical to see what that would cost. Uh, however, they haven't responded yet. Um, the estimate uh, estimate includes 
removal and replacement of 30 sheets of sheathing. Uh, additional sheets, sheets will be charged as needed. Cut holes in the roof area in six locations, add soffits, three new power roof uh, cooling fan vents, and soffit, uh, six soffit vents. Create openings and support framing for three fan units and six soffit vents. And I'm, I'm sure that that's to uh, prevent mold from, from growing in the future. Uh, furnish and install Atlas ice and water shield over the entire roof. Finish and install new metal edging and rake on eaves. Install Atlas, I'm sorry, I got something that keeps on popping up here. Uh, pinnacle pristine architectural shingles. Install and finish uh, uh, wall flashings. Furnish and install new shingle over ridge vent. Furnish all three electrical powered vents with thermostatic controls and remove and dispose of all debris. Doesn't say how many square though. Yeah. No. So is that the repair or the whole new roof? That's that's a whole new roof. Okay. So they're going to scrape off all the shingles. Yeah. Replace what the, the what? they're estimating at least thirty boards, mm -hmm. plywood. It would be an additional cost if there's more than thirty. If there's more than that. Um, so with that, to scrape off all the shingles, we have to take the antennas off the off the roof. Which, uh, which the 66. I don't know if you have to really take the antennas off. Well, we're waiting. We're waiting for. Yeah. It's those, fixed. A, those antennas should be fixed with the, the uh, rubber mounting around them. The, but those are secured to, you know, a frame. That's why we're waiting for Tactical, who hasn't hasn't responded to us yet. He's been uh, very slow during this during this time. So that that. Either cost, the 66 or the 33, does not include any removal of the antenna or anything like that, or if it had to be. Or coordination with tactical, correct. Okay. I would say send it out to bid and see what we get back. I mean, more than likely, we're going to. As a town, we're probably going to keep the building, right? We're not going to tear the building down and just leave an empty lot. More than likely, correct? I wouldn't say that that's more than likely. No? Is there a use for the building? We, everything we've heard about the building is that it's outdated and for <coughs> marginal service. I think Franny has expressed that he could use it for storage and what have you. And then I. I'm just trying to think rationally. Is it is it worth it if we if we can do something with the building to put a new roof on it, or if it's something that we're just going to tear down? Then obviously not. But. Well, see, it's not built according to specifications to redo it into a police department now. Extensive, extensive, you know, structural work. Correct, but you could know, it be something else? So uh, yeah, to use it as storage, to to use it as offices up above that you know aren't emergency. You know, oriented um, is a different story. Some people I talked about so re repurposing it as a community room to ha have events and stuff like that. Oh, and all the fields there could be a concession stand. <laughs> 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 so, I, you know, I, I think it'd be best, you know, we might get that company from what, East Haven, Michael, that did the Bogger House and the Old Town Hall. Yeah. Um, you know, but we didn't know they were around until we put that out to bid. Right. You know, so I, I would say it's not going to cost us anything to put it out to bid. Let's put it out to bid and see what new roof it costs. And 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 what if, what about looking at the this? Power yeah. And what about looking at this as two separate projects? Um, to to me, uh, I don't know the the whole basement remediation, the, the mold issue. If you want to get a jump on to me that's the most concerning uh, to get yeah. a jump on that pull that pull that out it's under the threshold uh, you, you've got a you've got a quote if, if you're inclined to you know to me that that I would attack that first get that underway get that going and then while, while you're putting out the bid for the for the roof if that makes sense in my mind that's how I'd, I'd go at it. Well you're well, gonna have to get three quotes for the yeah, uh, well, mediation. For the remediation yeah but you got one already and the mold has to go out to bid too. 
No, it'd just be quoted uh, because it's under the, th well, this one quote yeah, is under three the special threshold. Comments. So if you're under 7,500, then you can just get three quotes. But does it make sense? You're talking about starting the remediation before you fix the roof? This is in the basement. Oh, just, or just the basement? Yeah, yeah, the, the, the basement remediation. Okay. Personnel and, are going down in that basement right. all the time. Yeah, I mean, to me it makes sense to, to sequence that, start that, while you, you know, throw it out to bid and then get the roof done as, as soon as you can. That makes the most sense. Yeah, it makes sense. So we should get a cost on, uh, as far as a roof, a yeah. repair I'll, I'll and, a, and or a, new? I'll make a motion that two we options. proceed with the remediation of the mold in the basement and we proceed with an RPQ, whatever you want to call it, um, go up the bid for the roof. And then by then, you know, hopefully within a month. A repair or re total replacement, Mike, of the roof? Total replacement. Hey, why not do both? Mm -hmm. I, I both, would think yeah. we do both. Can't hurt. Put both out the bid. Sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Do a new roof and a repair. You know, at, like an add alternate. Yeah, kind of. An add alternate. We know. We know the roof is stapled down. So in order to repair the roof, you're going to have to re renail every one of those shingles because those staples are all rusted out, and it's going to pick up. So I mean, there's no sense in. I did, I did my my roof was stapled. I did it last year, and I had to do it because all the staples rusted, and there's only probably a few left in there, and they don't do staples anymore. They only do nails now. So I experienced that firsthand because my roof was at my house was put on the same time the roof at the police department was put on. Before we make the commitment to a whole new roof, do we really want to answer Ron's question? Is there a use for that building after we replace the police station with a new, a new station house? Because I distinctly remember somebody telling us that building has marginal to no value once the police move out of it. I don't know if it has no value. Four walls, a roof, and a, you know, and a basement has value. If it's got a use, I'm all for spending the money. But if whatever it's going to be is on the bad end of a wrecking ball in two or three years, then we want to do the cheapest repair possible. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah. We also got to think, keep in mind too that if we may, if we if we keep a building, you know, there's going to be periodic maintenance has to be done to it. And if we're not, if we don't end up utilizing it, then you know, we end up with, we end up with something that we have to take care of that we have no use well, that, for. So we do I, have to kind of. That's why I wanted to put it out to bid, see what the bids come back to install a new roof on that. You know, we got one person's opinion. Right. We don't we don't have a cost. This way we can see is it going to cost us twenty five thousand dollars the same as the old town hall, which everybody <coughs> quoted as a price of fifty thousand. Right. And it was I believe Michael was half the cost. Right. It was a good. Yeah. So good. So let's let's see what it cost us to put a roof on that building in real numbers, and you know the remediation. I would I would put that out to bid and see what that's costing to remediate that. You know, instead of going. Right, but we might years. also we, we, it might also be uh, uh, important too to to put that. I, I agree. Put that out. Find out what a new roof is going to really cost out to bid. But also what a repair is going to cost. I mean, right now the repair costs thirty-three thousand, <coughs> round numbers, right? Um, Chief. Yeah, thirty-three nine ten plus twenty-eight fifty. So we should, we should have the, that bid out too. So then we have well, what are, how are they two options. It, did they say? Yeah, not um, uh, to provide a uh, minimal repair existing roof as a stopgap until the new police headquarters is constructed and ready for occupancy. Provide this on a time material basis, which include locating effective areas contributing to water infiltration, removing the shingles and damaged plywood, applying underlayment, and patching shingles. No guarantee on color match. Our hourly rate is 76 76 an hour. See, they did a repair on the south side of that building, the red right side of that building, what, five years ago, six years ago? Capacity. I don't so think it. I don't think it hurts to get both. That was, that was less than five years ago. <coughs> and so it, and it, yeah, the Paso? Yeah, I think so. Six years. There's still there's still 
even if you replace the whole roof, there still has to be some mold remediation in the attic. Right. Um, because the mold is on the rafters and on the, on the Right. Yeah, the mold, that's a, that yeah. has to, you know, that definitely so has to be So the other thing you might want to consider is what, what use are you going to use it for? Because uh, if, if you're going to have as many people that's in it now, maybe a storage facility might be something that you can use it for. You still have the septic issues, the, the pipes. So here, Mike, this is what I was thinking of. If you put it out to bid for both, at least we're doing it now. If for some reason we put it out just for new and then we start thinking about it more and we realize that the septic's an issue, maybe we don't want to use the building and stuff like that, now we would have to put it out to bid again at that point later down the road for a repair. Whereas if we just do it now, we'll have the information sooner and then it gives us, still gives us time to think about what we want to do. And what then I'm, what I'm saying is I don't want to waste thirty thousand dollars trying to save that roof when that roof's at its life expectancy. So let's just say we're not going to use that building. If we're spending, that. if you're spending, what do you, what do you call thirty three thousand for the roof mm -hmm. for the patch? Yeah. yeah, for the repair. Yeah, yeah, thirty three nine ten. Thirty three nine. We did the whole old town hall for 25 and we haven't even put out the bid yet so and they're staples so there's no way you're going to save that whole roof and it's at its life expectancy I mean, so so even if you do the, the patch job to it what is the expectancy of the patch job they're just saying to hold it over till we get a new police department so you are you going to have the same issue three or four years down the line with it starting to leak again For the the complete job, it's sixty. Well, they quoted sixty five six six three. So, I guess my concern is we put it out to bid for new, and let's just say we get say the lowest we get is fifty five, just for argument's then, sake. Then we come back here and we talk about it. We're no different than we are now. But at right, least but have, then at least we have a phone price. Right, but then this is a couple months down the road, and now we got to talk about repairs. And we've lost a couple months, and they're still, still in there still. with those problems for a couple months. If we just do both now, we still have we could still do whatever we want down the road, but at least we're one step ahead of the game, and we can act sooner. Yeah, I think we should definitely go both options. It's just that we're just getting numbers. Yeah, there's yeah, no commitment one way or the right. other. Then we make a decision based on the numbers, and and if we decide yay or nay on. The longevity of the, the, the I agree with you though. If it comes in at twenty five below the thirty, then yeah, absolutely. But it may not, you know. Now, that's that's my only concern is is you have a thirty three thousand dollar repair on a twenty five, twenty six year old roof, well, and your shingles are guaranteed; they're warranted for twenty five years. Yeah, they're only going to patch. They're only they, they say they're only going to patch. Yeah, so you got you got the rest of the roof that you're not you're not even going to touch. I, I would like to see the options, both both options. I agree. I mean, it doesn't yeah. cost anything more. Yeah. It can't hurt. Yeah. I mean, if we decide to keep the building, I agree with you, Mike. We it, go with yeah. the thing, but if we're not going to keep the building, I I don't see why we can't see two prices. But and on the remediation, so there's the remediation of the mold in the rafters and everything else would get taken care of when we repair or replace the roof, and yeah, then there's yeah. mold in the basement, so that's a separate. I mean, that's another remediation. Correct. Yeah. So so yeah, the uh, uh, the abatement and remediation uh, in the attic is included in the uh, the patch job. Right. Okay. And then the so. We talked about doing the remediation in the basement because that's we can start that now. That is separate from the roof. Yeah, that should area. be done as soon as possible. I, I agree. And, and that because it's under the threshold of seventy five hundred, we just need to get three quotes, mm -hmm. and we can move ahead with that. Right. Um, part of this was I thought that you wanted to know if we could cover any of the nineteen twenty budget if we had some. Certainly, could cover the remediation in the basement. Um, we, I think that we could cover the, uh, the the patch the patch job also. Um, you know, this the, the COVID thing really had a 
significant impact on the police department. It slowed it down quite a bit. Our spending went down, um, so so we were able to show some savings. So that was I don't I think it was mentioned at one of the last meetings. That was that. That's why I brought it up. Okay. So. So we would like you to, I guess the consensus of the council is to get three quotes on the remediation for the basement area so that we can start that right away. And then we want to put out an RFP, Q, whatever it's called, for the, for the roof and the remediation. New and a patch. A new and a patch. Hmm. I have a question on, on the mold remediation. Um, does that have to be done by a, a certified or qualified person, not just a, a roof contractor? This, this is not just a roof Okay, contractor. That's, yeah, I, that's why I'm asking. And, and I'm sure that they would probably sub it out. Okay. Would be my guess. All right. Because there must be some documentation that goes oh, there with has that. to be. Yeah. I'm sure. Okay. And is it possible to have that RFP in two weeks at our next council meeting so that we can approve and get that out we can I, I would uh, yeah because uh, there's only one meeting in August it, and it, it's right it's specs back for two weeks from tonight right right yeah mm -hmm. um, yeah it's a it's a it's a roof bid with and I think it's pretty straightforward but I don't know how much documentation or data that can be you know, taken from from the proposal, uh, but I'll work with the chief. Or I, I don't. I can't say what hurdles. Uh, I don't say. Well, I mean, we we're just have did, to we just it. did the roof proposal for the yeah. old town hall and the auger house. Yeah. So you can start with that as a base. You take the old town hall and just change right. the building size. Right. Right. Yeah. Should, and, and, yeah. And then you right. do we that. Can use that as a template. To and then you do the addendum for the yep. repair. But yeah. I, I think that the part that you're going to have a problem with is, is that you have to have somebody that's qualified to do the mold. Right. Also because you just can't have a roofer come in. Right. 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 Correct. That, that'll have to be an, that might be an a special, addition to Well, the, it's going to be a, yeah. uh, the chief's saying it's a specialized company, or unless yeah. they, they sub it out, the roofer's going to go then yeah, sure team the up with. You're with just going to address it, and then the roofer subs it out. Yep. As long as they have a certified right. They're gonna have to mold be, specialist, right. they'll be all set. Yeah. Certified remediation specialist, or whatever the terminology or certifications right. are, to be able to handle that. Yeah. Okay. But in order to keep the project moving and to get this done, if if possible, I would like to see the the bid for approval at the next council meeting. And on. On the other one, the remediation for the basement, basement part, once you get the three quotes, you don't have to come back to us. You can just go just ahead go and away. do that, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think the other, the last piece is just tying in uh, tactical, I guess, and getting the, um, in terms of the uh, determination pretty, on the antenna. Pretty much a sole source provider anyway, so I right. guess whatever, whatever it costs, it costs, I don't think we have any Right, no. Yeah. But just to have numbers. And, Okay. Okay. Sound good, Chief? Sounds good. <laughs> okay. I have a question. <laughs> yep. Um, there was part of a motion made, but is nothing needed? No. Okay. No, because we're going out for an RFP too. Okay. Okay. And they got I was just they're just doing uh, quotes on the uh, remediation yep. in the basement. Okay, next we have uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a discussion of possible action to approve a, a community art mural for the Poco Festival grounds. Yes, um, Carrie's here. Carrie, you want to come forward? Sure. Yeah, there was an issue in with the, the um, rec commission and, and getting it um, uh, meeting for them and so they that's why this landed on the uh, the council's um, agenda 
is to have a presentation to understand it and uh, give the blessing that uh, we're going to essentially put a, a project, a temporary project up on, t on town property for it. And I'll let Carrie go through with the presentation and explanation. Sure. So um, there has been a proposal. <laughs> yeah. Um, there has been a proposal uh, for a community art mural. It was proposed um, by a resident through one of the North Bradford uh, community Facebook pages. And it was um, bumped over to myself and, and Parks and Rec to get involved and try to um, help this project come to be. So the, um, the proposal is to put up a temporary eight by eight wood canvas um, on the potato and corn festival grounds since those grounds aren't going to be utilized this year. The art mural would be um, not facing 22. It would be actually right on the edge of the gravel lot facing the softball field, the entrance to the public works department. Um, reason being is I think putting it in that position would hopefully deter people from doing something inappropriate. It has less of an audience and the public works department drives past it early morning every day, so it would be, it would be seen. Um, one side of the art mural, would, people would bring their own paints and they would artistically express themselves, and on the other side it would be a chalkboard finish where people could write inspirational messages. Um, it was our thought to have a theme. Um, perhaps some of the ideas that have been um, discussed are if we wanted to do something coronavirus related and have a silver linings theme to it, or if we wanted to do something potato and corn festival related since we're not having the festival, have a, a POCO memories um, artboard. What else? How, how big did you, did you uh, It's an eight by eight um, piece of, basically it's just plywood. Two pieces of plywood. Mm -hmm. okay. And the materials um, have already been, um, it's already been proposed that a resident will donate the materials, they will build the structure, and Public Works will um, put up the structure to make sure that it's, it's safe. This would also, having it right off of 22, it would also allow people like our seniors that are homebound to have an opportunity to- I, Hold on, I can't right now. To take a, to take a ride um, and drive by it and be able to see the art mural without having to get out of the car or to stop up traffic at all. So it's at the edge of the parking lot in the grass area? Or it's going to be in the grass area, oh, that okay. little gravel air, that little Where gravel. the buses turn around. Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. exactly. Premier parking. Correct. Yeah. In premier parking. <laughs> yes, there's talk a couple of terms. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Premier parking, Lou. Okay. We'll use Lou terms. Um, so it would be in between those trees okay. where yep. the premier parking is. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I just really like the idea. I thought it would be a great opportunity to, you know, have something that people could come out and do safely, um, you know, take a little pride in a project, be a part of something, um, be creative, something fun. And it's not going to cost us anything. And it's not going to cost us anything. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> well, I, guess, I guess my concern is what happens if there's, inappropriate stuff put on it, then how is that taken care of? So, what we've already thought about that. Okay, I'm, um, I'm sure you did. So, again, that's why we would have it facing not the main road, because that's just asking for somebody to right. do something. Um, we would also post, depending on what we decide as a theme, we would also, as a department, we would come up with guidelines, and we would reserve the right to remove something that was offensive or inappropriate. I really like the idea, but I, I have the same concerns that Rose does, and just even, I mean, people get their mailboxes smashed all the time in town and stuff like that. <clears throat> Is there any way that you could put plexiglass over both sides and let an artist be up there for like a month at a time and then take the plexiglass down to protect the art underneath and, and further deter somebody from messing with their art or I mean, what have you? I think that's a that's to your point. I think that's a really great suggestion. Yes, 
unfortunately, we have to kind of think about the downside of things, but I'd like to believe the optimistic eternal optimist in me would like to believe that this could be a fun project that people could just kind of be a part of. Um, and it would be something that's temporary too. So I'm just thinking maybe for a month, put it up. Um, July is National Parks and Recreation Month, so um, it's just one way we could try to highlight an activity. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to maybe doing one artist at a time, but I think it takes the fun out of it to be like, you know, grab your family, hey guys, let's grab our paintbrushes, we're gonna go, you know, paint on the community mural today. So well then, how, if you're gonna do it that way, how do you keep, how do you keep it from just looking like, I'm sorry, but like a nightmare of people just constantly painting over each other, like? Well, if it gets that much attention, perhaps we could add a second board. So it's just cool. something for people to go it's doodle just something on? To do. Exactly. It's, it's something. <laughs> it's good. Yes. Yeah. Basically, right. Yes. What, what happens in the end of the temporary period, whatever that is? So there's a couple things that could happen. We could just take it down and be done with it. If we go with the Poco memories, I which I like, I like, which I like might idea. be something we could display at next year's, right. you know, at the information booth. Um, if we could put it into storage and we could pull it out and, you know, hey, remember that 2020 year? Um, and we could bring it out and display it as, as part of the, you know, history and part of the, the festival. Right. Because isn't next year like the 20th it year, is. right? Because this was supposed to be the 20th year, but it right. just got delayed a year. Right, technically gets bumped. Right. Who knows, maybe this might even roll into a uh, annual thing that Correct. we have a, a community art mural where people can write things or about the festival every year and we could start something, for, I don't know. So do you only want to do it for a month? We don't have to only do it for a month. Because the other thing I'm thinking of just, um, it just popped in my head when Rose said that is if you do, if, if you, not that I'm totally trying to push my head here, but if you if you took that <laughs> idea, and you had somebody a week at a time, yeah, down the road you could and you kept to your theme, the Poco theme, you could then potentially uh, have the community involved, maybe put it in the newspaper and have people vote on their favorite piece of artwork, and then that's the one that could be displayed next year at the 20th anniversary of the Poco Festival or sure. something like that. I mean that's an idea as well. I want to be able to encourage residents of all ages to, yeah. to do this as well. So I want, you know, the, the three-year-old to be able to, you know, I don't know, Doodle. draw at your corn. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, or the 93-year-old the that, that wants to write a message of inspiration. So this is not only a community project, but it's something that's, you know, intergenerational as well. So you're right, but the location is good because you have the cops to hang out there once in a while. You have Franny's guy that's <laughs> right. on that. <laughs> And whoever goes there to start it knows the cop station's right there, so it's probably one of the better places in town it's right. for it's that. And it's easy to get to, yeah. easy access, it and is. not, not backing up. Yeah. yeah, you have a place to park, and so you just need our approval. Is that is I that do, it? I'm and then you guys will come up with the idea and, I am. and I'm just coordinate everything and, else. You know, feedback and input into the idea, and you know, to just to, to push my agenda. <laughs> Um, that I just really think that you know the the concept of, of art definitely um, you know helps individuals emotionally and socially and that's something that we're really missing right now during this quarantine so I'd like to try it all right so I'll make a motion uh, that we approve the community art mural on the Poco festival grounds as presented second Okay, a uh, motion was made by uh, Councilman <coughs> Deloney, seconded by Council, Councilman uh, Felicia. Any more, any further discussion? So there'll be posted guidelines, I'm assuming? Yes, we will post them on our social media page, we will post them on our website, and we will also laminate and post physical guidelines right there on the art mural. Okay. Can I have a vote, Michelle? You may. You all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Karen. Nice job. Thanks. Michael, we have citizen statements and petitions. Do you have anything? Let me check. I have two on Facebook, Mike. Okay. Well, I, go ahead. What do you have on Facebook, Anthony? Uh, the first one is from Antonio Giuseppe. When will the meetings be open to the public? You have no problem opening when you want money. Um, the second one is from Cliff Potter about the basketball court abuse issue. Shouldn't you also be, be all town courts, Northbrook as well? It also seems that the Northbrook soccer field is used heavily by non-residents as well. Okay, thank you. I don't have any uh, via email. Okay, thanks Anthony. Thank you, Ed. Uh, how about a five minute, five minute break before we go into executive session? <laughs> okay, let's do that. Um, you wanna or why don't you, yeah, well, yeah. Just motion you into. I'll, I'll make a motion to move into executive session to include the town manager and the town attorney. Is he in on yep. this? Yeah, Vin, you still there? Yeah, I think so. Well, he's muted, but. Mm -hmm. Yes, I. Okay. Yes, I am. We're a motion to go into executive session. We're going to take uh, just a five-minute uh, break and then and then resume. Okay. Thanks. I've been I've been following along. Okay. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm.